Although almost everyone can quickly name a not-so-bright character in video games and the real world, it's not so easy to find such a big nerd as OG Loke. You don't want me to come with a gun in your face? I spit a hotter Even though the GTA series features many strange characters like Hillary King, or as crazy as the hero of today's video like Manny Escuela, OG Loke simply stands out from all these characters. Jeffrey Cross, better known as OG Loke, is a guy who went from a stinking block floating in a storm drain in Los Santos in the blink of an eye to a shining star of American West Coast rap. OG Loke grew up on Grove Street, along with other notable figures from the families. Even as a young kid, he identified very strongly with the families, constantly trying to impress the gang, which, well, usually ended up being a huge embarrassment for him at best. This was partly because Jeffrey was not very intelligent or athletic. He looked more like a chump. Taking him to the team was associated with being embarrassed in the eyes of the ballas or vagos, and the consequent lack of respect. Moreover, Jeffrey was reluctant to prove that he could be a true alpha male. The man has talked many times about being a gangster just like Sweet or Big Smoke, but he hasn't done anything that deserves any approval. That's right, Sweet and Big Smoke are still making fun of Jeffrey, who once again came up with a brilliant idea, in this case, to become a rapper. As if that wasn't enough, Sweet very rightly points out that OG Loke does absolutely nothing for the Grove Street families. Instead, the guy got some tattoos and put on a gold chain and expected everyone to suddenly respect him more. Anyway, Jeffrey realized at some point that he needed to pull himself together and start doing things that would earn him respect in the hood. As a result, Loke began to commit petty crimes, but all they gave him was the ability to thoroughly explore the prison walls from the inside. During the OG Loke mission, we even hear about some of his misdemeanors, such as driving around town in stolen cars, getting parking fines and such. Interestingly, from the first dialogue in this mission, we can hear that OG Loke was someone's princess in jail for the past three weeks, so it can be concluded that he was probably sexually abused by his fellow prisoners or even wanted it himself. Yeah, you know Jeffrey's been somebody's bitch for the past three weeks, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. To at least partially cover up all the events that happened behind the prison bars, OG Loke wants CJ to help him take down Freddy, a member of Los Santos Vagos, who probably defended Jeffrey from getting beaten up by other prisoners in exchange for, well, you know what. It is worth mentioning in this thread that Freddy allegedly stole Jeffrey's rhyme book, although there's little indication of this during the mission. Hey yo, give me back my rhymes, you thief! I'm gangsta! You dropped a soap, sugar! I don't know nothing about any rhyme. It's clear that OG Loke simply wants to get rid of an inconvenient witness. A later stage of the mission also reveals that Jeffrey has been paroled, presumably for good behavior. However, the man must take a job at Burger Shot as part of social rehabilitation on the order of the parole officer. If he doesn't, he'll go back to jail. Besides, the main life plan that OG Loke wants to realize after getting out of prison is to become a world-class rapper. Of course, Loke has no talent, so he's forced to implement some immoral steps into the plan. These points are not easy to tick off, but fortunately, CJ appears in Loke's way at this time, who is trying to rebuild his reputation as brave, which in turn, Loke decides to exploit. If you don't know what we mean, be sure to watch the video you have in a tab. We're talking about CJ's various stupid decisions there, one of which has to do with his powerful desire to regain the respect of his homies. And so, to begin with, CJ is asked to roll up a vehicle with a good sound system, which will come in handy later in the Super Hyper OG Loke farewell party. Carl Johnson is then asked to visit Mad Dog's mansion to steal the popular rapper's rhyme book so that, to put it mildly, Loke can get some solid inspiration. OG Loke doesn't stop there. It turns out that Loke cannot spread his wings because of Alan Crawford, the manager of Mad Dog. Crawford, also known as Scipio, worked hard to keep Mad Dog at the top. Since Loke has good rap lyrics and became a big threat to Crawford's client, Mad Dog's manager was giving Loke trouble. From Jeffrey's perspective, there was no better option than to murder Scipio. Of course, Loke didn't want to get his hands dirty, eventually asking CJ for help once again. After all these events, Loke wanted to show the world that he was not allowing anyone to push him around anymore. The man decided to quit his job at Burger Shot and throw a farewell party on Grove Street. Farewell since, after this, he was likely to be sent back to jail for failing to comply with the decision issued by the district court. But in the end, that didn't happen. 
Jeffrey Cross became a celebrity in the blink of an eye, while a massive cash injection allowed him to evade justice. As a newly minted drug lord, Big Smoke was quick to seize the opportunity and approached OG Lok to become his manager. Jeffrey agreed without much hesitation, as Big Smoke could promote his music on the streets of Los Santos due to his reputation, power, and connections. Furthermore, Big Smoke may have enhanced his reputation as a supposed gangster, making Loke even more credible by conveying things in his rap lyrics that Big Smoke would have covered. By the way, it's also worth saying that Loke's end could probably be miserable if he rejected the help of the then-powerful Big Smoke, who was looking for legal businesses himself. After all, given that Big Smoke made a lot of money from drug dealing, sooner or later, he had to start looking for legal sources of income to have somewhere to spend all this illegally earned money to be able to use it. Otherwise, Smoke, buying himself second gifts such as sports cars or luxury villas, would quickly attract the attention of the services fighting with people illegally earning their money. And so, OG Loke just happened to be the perfect candidate for all of this, in addition to Big Smoke's initiative to open an orphanage in Los Santos, which, of course, was also a front for criminal activity. Going back strictly to OG Loke, everything started to be very successful for him. Thanks to the West Coast Rap Legends website, we can learn that Jeffrey released a music album called Straight From The Streets in 1992. The album even featured several songs that hit the charts. In addition, the man created his clothing brand called Lokedown, which began to be very popular in local clothing stores such as Victim. Therefore, we will even find a few curiosities in the game itself. Well, after OG Loke's career skyrocketed and Mad Dog's career fell, then in the game it can be seen that the former's clothing has become more expensive and the latter's much cheaper. Another interesting fact about the Lokedown brand is that we can find it in two sources. The first mention can be found on the WCTR radio station during an interview with OG Loke on Entertaining America. The interview is also interesting for this reason because OG Loke talks about working with Big Smoke. You see, my clothing company, Loke Down, home of the G, says this. I love reefer. It's the rules if you're a rapper. Wow, those sound like some great rules. You know, you get a lot of flack in the media these days. In a recent press conference, your manager came to your defense. A lot of people say gangster rap is misogynistic posturing by fake-ass idiots who spend more time in drama school than they ever did pimping or hustling dope. Well, I assure you, OG Loke is the real thing. He's hated women all his life. He's sold drugs to school children. He's murdered innocent people just for kicks. But he rhymes like an angel. And I assure you, it's all in a good cause. So either way, you can feel good about yourself listening to this music. Well, that was very informative. Big Smoke is doing a lot for the community or, or to it. He sounds like a great guy. In turn, another source where we can find the Lokedown clothing brand is the Brady Games Guide. As you can see in the attached screen, the authors of the guide placed an advertisement for OG Loke's clothing brand inside the book, which in our opinion is a cool curiosity. Unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end, and the truth had to come out eventually. After many months, desperate Mad Dog meets CJ, who saves him from death. Mad Dog is rebounding from the bottom thanks to great Carl Johnson. In the beginning, the main character of the game reclaims the mansion of the once popular rapper from Big Papa, and immediately after that, he takes on Jeffrey, just to return Mad Dog the glory and prestige he deserves, which we witness in the Cutthroat Business Mission. The men's confrontation takes place in the Blastin' Fools Records building. When it comes to fisticuffs, Jimmy Silverman, who is the music producer of this label, suddenly appears. As it turns out, Silverman intended to sue OG Loke the following year, as he mentioned in the cutscene. Let's talk, all right? Your ass. I need hits. I mean hits. Now what about this guy? This uh, phony. I've got a good mind to sue his ass into next year. What's more, it's worth noting that OG Loke chose not to say that he did all this with the help of CJ. A lot of players wonder why Jeffrey didn't tell the truth. Well, in our opinion, OG Loke could not have told the truth because he would automatically admit his guilt and put himself in an even worse light because CJ was just a tool in his hands. Jeffrey Cross was behind the whole elaborate plan to destroy Mad Dog's career and kill the rapper's manager. And secondly, Mad Dog could simply not believe such accusations. After all, note that OG Loke's entire career is one big lie. The man built his career on works that did not belong to him. As such, OG Loke's word, to say the least, counts for little. Well, 
Adding to this, the lack of witnesses that CJ helped him, it would rather cause everyone to consider such a statement from Loke as another lie. CJ had secretly obtained Mad Dog's Book of Rhymes. In the Management Issues mission, no one gives any indication that CJ has been recognized and that the wrong person is driving this vehicle. Which is weird, because CJ wasn't even wearing a disguise. The same is true of the police escort, which has no objections. This gives us the conclusion that the windows of the vehicles must have been tinted. The last unclear aspect is Big Smoke's lack of intervention in this case. However, as it turns out, not necessarily. Well, Big Smoke, despite his profession, was a respected person in Los Santos thanks to his legal businesses. When Loke's falsehood came to light, Big Smoke preferred to turn his back on OG Loke so as not to worsen his PR. As a consequence of all these events, after some time, Jeffrey Cross was probably arrested by the police and sued for the fraud he committed. It's very possible that the man received a larger prison sentence and his chances for a musical career were pretty much ruined. The story of Jeffrey Cross is another perfect example for gamers that we should not give up. But unlike OG Loke, we should legally earn our success, absolutely not guided by the saying, whatever it takes. This is another example in the GTA series where we see that selfishness leads nowhere. We also talk about various stupid decisions and ill-considered actions in the episodes that are currently displayed on the screen. So to continue the topic of today's video, we highly recommend you watch them. Meanwhile, that would be all. Take care and see you soon.